Yes, because otherwise we... Welcome to Envisioned Broadcasting. The station designed to encourage, equip, and empower you for growth and success presents When They Hear Us An Author's Movement A show that provides authors a platform to share their voice with the world When They Hear Us With Dr. Tracy Hines Lashley Begins now Hello everyone uh, This is our first show of When They Hear Us An Author's movement. And uh, I really, I was riding down the road, believe it or not. <laughs> and I was like, what kind of show can I have for authors? Because there are so many who actually wanted to be on other shows I have. And I was like, hmm, well, we have a voice. And I thought about the movie when, when they see us. I was like, oh, when they hear us. Oh. I was like, oh, that's got a nice ring to it. <laughs> So today I wanted to kick us off with some amazing women. Um, she doesn't know it yet, but she is like, I, I would say my mentor, my coach, <laughs> my accountability partner when it comes to writing, Dr. Uh -huh. Nessa Short. And we also have, <laughs> she's looking at me like, what? <laughs> <laughs> we also have Dr. Norma McLaughlin, um, First Lady. And it's funny, we met years ago in church. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Went to the same church, and oh. here we are again, uh -huh. connected again because of Dr. Short. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's this amazing journey, amazing ride. Um, and because of Dr. Short, I have actually participated in seven anthologies in the last five months which is amazing. Uh, All of them that's been released so far have been bestsellers. And one is a contender for the Guinness Book of World Records. I'm excited. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. So before I introduce them or let them introduce themselves, um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Dr. Tracy Hines Lashley. I am the Chief Elevation Officer for the Leaders Innovative Growth Solutions, LLC and also the founder and the CEO of Bossed Up Lead Hers Incorporated. It is a nonprofit organization and a newly formed company called ASERT Solutions, LLC, where I do a lot of media and business solutions. So let's start with Dr. Short. <clears throat> Ma'am. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Great afternoon. Great evening, depending on the time of the show. Thanks so much, Dr. Tracy, for the invitation. I appreciate the platform. Well, as I already stated, my name is Anissa Short, I'm Dr. Anissa Short. My mama calls me Anissa and I answer to both. Um, I'm a native of Memphis, Tennessee, been living in the state of North Carolina now for almost eight years. Um, I'm a, I consider myself an advocate for the home-based entrepreneur. I've been building a home-based business of my own for almost 21 years. And everything that I do, everything that I put my hands to, including operating my own entrepreneurial business, but also the um, literary projects, and even workshops and, and and things of that nature are geared towards educating and empowering and um, encouraging female entrepreneurs, particularly those who operate a home-based business, but definitely everybody within the sphere of entrepreneurship. So I am excited and so delighted, Dr. Lashley, to be on your show, and especially this being the first, the first, um, the first show. Congratulations on this platform for everything that you have done and aspire to do to um to provide authors with a voice. Yes, I'm loving it already. Thanks to you, Dr. Short. All right, Dr. Normal. <laughs> well, hello, and thank you for having me as well. I'm very excited about this being the first show uh, and to be in a voice for some people who are very near and dear to my heart, and that is writers. And I always think that they don't have a place for their voice. So it's exciting to hear now that they will. But I'm Norma, First Lady McLaughlin, founder, a CEO and CEO of Chosen Pen uh, Institute now that we have a school 
Uh, so it is now the Chosen Pen Publishing is Chosen Pen Institute. There are quite a few different businesses underneath that. So you can find us for writing, publishing, uh, marketing, um, what else? Just whatever you want to have in the coaching. And we also have a coaching school that's just kicked off this week. So all of that is under the Chosen Pen Institute. But I am a certified master literary consultant, certified master coach, coach trainer, and um, I'm a minister's mates coach. And I'm also starting a program for to uh, certify minister's mates coaches, which is a field that we find, oh, I find that is uh, open and in need of uh, for our minister's mates. Uh, I also have a master uh, I'm a master coach certified coach and with basically in writing journaling specializing in spiritual growth coaching and I help coaches and service providers write books to increase their influence and their income and I thank you so much for having me here today oh man I was like I needed my notepad where is it <laughs> Man, okay, you know what? I know who I'll be hiring very soon. <laughs> hey, sounds good. <laughs> so I want to ask you ladies first, like, where did it start? Where did this journal journey of writing begin? Okay, you said ladies. So I guess mine has been the longest <laughs> journey so far. Um, of course, my journey started back because I am an educator. So back in my other life before retirement, of course, there was writing and whatever writing all the way up through dissertations and that type of thing. But the writing today uh, started back in 2000, I guess, 2011, 2007 or sometime way back there. Once I retired and determined that I was not going to do anything other than teach Bible studies. I wrote a few Bible studies, but the writing came when the Holy Spirit spoke to me saying that it is your time to help others write their book. It is your time to ensure that those people who are out here hurting uh, need to hear their stories. Uh, of course, I told him, no, um, I'm not doing that. I'm retired. I have no intentions of doing that. But needless to say, you see where I am today. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah. that was my burden. That has been uh, the role that I have been given to to plow. Y'all probably don't understand that analogy, but that is uh, what I do. My my heart is for those writers who have stories to tell, but not only because those stories heal the writers, they provide healing for them, but for those people who read their stories as well. Wow. And you know, it's interesting that you said healing because um, my first book that I completed was actually Dr. Short's book, Becoming a Shiro. And I had to tell myself, look, you need to get out of the way Tell your story because someone needs to hear it. Uh -huh. You know, uh, and the, one of my mentors, um, Dr. Cheryl Wood, would say, your story is about you, but it's not for you. Amen. And I, I had to, like, be vulnerable. And that's something that I'm not used to. <laughs> and I, yeah, it, writing is very healing to me. Yeah, that's true. Well, my story is uh, is very different from um, Lady Norma. I would have never imagined in a million years being where I am right now, honestly, because this was not on my radar. However, um, it was it was told to me that it would be, and that's another story for another time. But um, I, as I said earlier, I've been a, an entrepreneur for a while, and of course, about maybe four years ago. Well, maybe five years ago, I started doing writing for a local magazine and all of my uh, the writing, the, the articles that I wrote for the magazine catered to entrepreneurship, particularly start, it started off to spotlight home based business owners, but just entrepreneurship in general. And I would always interview the person not to promote their business as much as for them to um, share their story. So people would understand that entrepreneurship was just not something casually, you know, you know, their success did not come about just casually. They they gave um the you know the the nitty gritty. They got down to the nitty gritty, as people would say. I would ask the question about you know why did they 
why is entrepreneurship for them? Were there challenges challenges they had to face? If they were, if there were challenges, which I knew there were, what were they? What did they do to overcome? What advice they would give to someone that started their entrepreneur, wanting to start an entrepreneurial journey? That's pretty much where my writing started, and I just did that to really give myself give afford myself an opportunity to do something different. That's basically what I said. Fast forward, in the course of being here in the city in which I live, I participated with a lot of events where I ended up being kind of the, the mediator between home-based entrepreneurs and various other entities in the city. So anytime there was an event that was going to be hosted and they wanted vendors or they wanted business people represented, people would call me because they knew I could get the people there. You know, So then I became... I guess the event planner, I don't know what term you would use for that that job description, but in the course of working with those entrepreneurs and encouraging them to participate in events like that, I saw there there was a need because a lot of them did not know how to represent properly in the marketplace. So I decided to write a book because after telephone calls and telephone calls and more telephone calls of people even referring people to me and say, well, Anissa knows how to do it. Ask her. My husband was saying, you need to why don't you host a workshop or or create a webinar or a class? And I said, I would rather write a book and let them buy the book. And so that's that's why I started. I'm going to write this book. The book, the objective of the book was to provide the average home based business owner with a blueprint by which to uh, follow so that they could represent in the marketplace professionally and with the spirit of excellence. And in the course of me deciding to write that book, I became acquainted with Lady Norma, not knowing that she was practically my neighbor and not knowing that she had a publishing company. I was introduced to her as one with the publishing company and I knew I needed a mentor. And in the course of meeting her, um, the journey began. So when I tell you literally December 2019 is when my first book was released. And I almost did not participate with it. It was an anthology project. I was writing my book, The Vendor Blueprint. An opportunity came about to be a part of this anthology. I almost told the the coordinator of the project, no, thank you. But I reached out to Lady Norma because she was my mentor at the time and said, what do you think I should do? And she says, place a pause on your book and do this anthology. And I was like, are you serious? And she said, (laughs) yes. And so I'm so glad I listened because what happened is that book became an international bestseller. So as a result of me being obedient and following her instruction, I could now use international bestseller in all of my accolades because my book became an international bestseller. And I can use that tagline or that label for any future books I write. So that book was released in December 2019. My book, The Vendor Blueprint, was released in February 2020. Sometime around April, I participated in a devotional for women called I Am Worthy that was released in the spring of 2020. And then just around March of this year, I initiated an anthology project of my own called called Becoming the Shiro. And I had 14 fabulous women, all of whom are entrepreneurs, participate. (laughs) And we just finished the launch of it. And it has become an Amazon bestseller as well. So what was said to me, even prior to meeting Lady Norma, is actually coming to pass. And I have my fifth project. I'm, I'm just on the cusp of opening it up to put interested participants. So that's how the journey started. And again, if you had said to me, <laughs> I would be doing this. I would look at you and say, are you serious? I read books, but I don't write them. You know, that's about the fact that All right. With that, we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. Dr. Tracy Hines Lashley is a child of God, wife, mother, and grandmother. She was born and raised in Panama City, Florida, before moving to Fayetteville, North Carolina, at the age of 23. She is the lead HERZ architect trademark and supports leaders' elevation to the pinnacle, respect, leadership level, while strategizing team effectiveness and productivity. She specializes in helping women in leadership harmonize family and work life, while developing dynamic and productive teams. She is a dynamic, high-powered professional with a results-charged career in growth and leadership. Her purpose in life is to transform the lives of others by inspiring, equipping, and growing. Her mission in life is to provide leaders with the tools required to ignite an intentional growth mindset that will drive behavior to achieve actionable results of personal value. Her vision is to see women reach their full potential, 
remove obstacles and knowledge gaps, and lead their life versus just living their life. Find out more about Dr. Lashley at drtracylashley.info. Dr. Anissa Short, also known as the Work From Home CEO, proclaims to be an advocate for the home-based entrepreneur. As a best-selling author, workshop presenter, and podcast host, she uses her platforms to offer information vital to the success of other entrepreneurs in the home-based business industry. As an entrepreneur herself, she is a leader in a top direct sales company and has built an organization of clients and business partners represented in several states. She has coordinated and facilitated workshops and retreats that have served to educate, encourage, and empower others in business and has been noted as an influencer that understands the value of building strong collaborative relationships. As an independent contractor, Anissa has partnered with local community colleges, publishing and marketing companies, and training think tanks to organize, facilitate, and host events that support the success of current and aspiring entrepreneurs. For more information regarding her work and mission, Feel free to contact her directly on Facebook at at WFHCEO or online at www.workfromhomeceo.biz. Dr. Norma, First Lady McLaughlin born and raised in Reedsville, North Carolina, is the founder and CEO of Chosen Pen Institute. She is a certified master literary consultant and certified master coach trainer and specializes in ministers' mates, writing, journaling, and spiritual growth coaching. She is an Amazon International best-selling author and publisher. Dr. McLaughlin helps coaches and service providers write books to increase their influence and income. With her pen, Dr. McLaughlin helps individuals transform their purpose into profit. However, her number one goal is to assist writers to spread their God-given words to those who are so desperately waiting on them. We are back. We are talking to Dr. Anissa and Dr. Norma. Wow. They just shared their journey of becoming authors and publishers and and a a true inspiration to me. Um, As Dr. Short stated, she did not have the intentions of writing (laughs) books. Um, I thought my dissertation was my last book that I wrote. (laughs) (laughs) And that was like back in 2013. (laughs) Oh my God, I am done. That it makes you want to stop writing. I'm just gonna put it out. <laughs> yes. And you ladies can relate. <laughs> yes, yes. But you know, I also write poetry. Oh. So I have been writing since I was a kid. And I would have, you know, we, I'm sure you guys had a diary also. Uh-huh. I wish I could find right. my diaries. You didn't diary. have one? Uh-huh. I didn't have one. Really? Uh-huh. We had diaries. I, I, I never get finished. I was just like, it would just, no. You didn't have a diary with the little key in it, sir? I did not. I you keep losing the key. You're like, I, I'm like key. I never had a diary. I, I don't, you know, strange. Wow. I think about that down going like, I was not the normal female girl. I don't think, I don't know. Yeah, I was a girly girl. So, yeah. So let's talk about um, the importance of journaling. Do you journal? Well, I am a journaling coach, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Anissa journals, but I journal. I love journaling. I think that journaling is probably the best writing tool that we have at our disposal uh, for whatever that we whatever comes about in our lives. That if it's if you're writing or you're journaling, if you're having uh, any type of problem in your life, all the way from morning journaling to all, there are so many different types of journaling, but goal, setting your goal journaling, if you're trying to be uh, for an entrepreneur to let you know that uh, <laughs> you have goals and to get you through those goals. Uh, so journaling, is, as I say, I think is one of the most important tools that we have. And it usually, I tell people, if you journal, if you keep journaling, then of course you have to write because you've got to do something with all those journals. Yes. You journaling is not sure. something I've embraced um, as a discipline, unfortunately. However, I will say that within the last year or so, I have um, had a nudge that I need to start. Honestly, I don't yes. know if it's because I've been around Lady Norma for over a year now. Maybe she has a lot to do with this. But um, but no, I honestly, because I, I even even today or on yesterday, I was getting ready to purchase my 2021 um, um, date book. And mm-hmm. I was introduced or 
information was sent to me or made available to me about a date book that had journaling involved. It actually has space for you to do the journaling and your goal uh -huh. setting and your your gratitude, a space for gratitude okay. uh -huh. in the process. And so I said that would be excellent because my personality type, I can't have two and three books because some, something would come up missing. So I find it hard to keep up with my steno pad that I keep up with every month. <laughs> I'm like, where, where did my steno pad go? So I know that I need to have, if I had all of that one location. So um, because I, I I do want to have the the privilege or the, um, I want I want the experience of being able to look back at notes from three years ago or last year or two years ago and realize that what I had aspired to and what I set as my goals, then I'm, I will actually walk in, in the reality of it. Some of those things I, I keep in my head, but I don't have it written out. And mm -hmm. I've, I've also um, gained a gr even greater appreciation for the written word because there's so there's a lot of power and strength in in the word, not just verbalizing it, but also in writing it. They work mm -hmm. hand in hand. Yes. So thank you, Dr. Um, Norma, Lady Norma, for that. Yes, and I have a success journal that I put together, and I'm going to print it and make sure no, I'm going to send it to you and purchase it. Well, can and someone it has, purchase it? It's called a success journal, and it covers mm -hmm. all the topics that you would have within it. So oh, you would okay. have so is there a way that anyone can purchase that from you? Do you have a website? I'm sure, I'm sure this will make can you Can you share that site with us? <laughs> Cause I'm sure someone would want it. Do you know it by heart? It, will, it would be on my website, Chosen Pen uh, Publishing. Okay. Yes, there is a store on my website. All of our books sure are there's there. a link for the access to that. They can place the order there. Here's here's the thing I learned um, as a result of being a part of, um, um, I call a Lady Norma space. Is that every book that she has has published especially projects that she facilitated herself or coordinated, there was always an accompanying journal with it. And I went, do you do a journal with every book? Well, most of her, a lot of her projects are studies, like Bible studies, or she converts yes. them to Bible studies. So mm -hmm. in a sense, that made, that made sense. But because of her influence in my life, when we came out with this book, Becoming the Shiro, I immediately said, we're going to have a journal with this book because... When women read the stories that are contained within this book, it may provoke thought that they need to actually write out themselves. So we do have that that um, piece to go with it. And it was a, it wasn't initially a part of the plan, but it only made sense to include it. And of course, so thank you again, Lady Norma, for being a, a source of inspiration. So you're so <laughs> welcome, Dr. Short. You know what? And it's like like minded people, because I have always thought about creating journals. I even have where I mapped out some journals, but I never moved forward with it. And then, you know, being connected with you guys, I'm like, ooh, maybe I should go yes, back to that. <laughs> because I want to put out a journal of the month club. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. And that way, I mean, I already have that laid out too in this. So, but so each month would be a different journal with a different theme within it. Uh, like this month, I did a journal on gratitude. Next month, I'll do a month probably on giving or Christmas, something that has to do with Christmas. Last month, I did what was out there for sale about something. Anyway, each month has a different theme uh, to the journal. Oh, I don't know. If, I don't know if she's done this yet. And maybe this is putting you on the spot. Lady you know, I apologize if it is. But you finished up a devotional um, during the summer geared towards entrepreneurs. Did you create a journal with that as well? Yes, yeah, there's a journal that goes. It's, it's a matter of fact, it's an entrepreneurial prayer journal. Oh. Uh, 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 as a matter of fact, I think it's getting ready to come out this month. It hasn't been published yet, but it will be published. The journal and the uh, okay, I couldn't. I think her signal is breaking up. Your signal is weak. Yeah. I think maybe the book. I will say this: that the book is um, entrepreneurial journal. An entrepreneurial mm -hmm. devotional, a devotional for entrepreneurs, and she has a journal to accompany it. And it's wow. due to be released, if not this month, December. Okay, yeah. I have to go to her website and find out information on that one. That'd be a great one. So as um, we try and get her back on, you know, I, I talked about anthologies and I was, uh, I had an illusion of knowledge. <laughs> 
<laughs> of an anthology. Can you kind of explain that to us? Because we're spitting the words out and they're like, oh, what are right. you talking about? <laughs> that, that was my first impression as well. Well, basically an anthology is, is a collection or a collaboration of stories is basically what it is. Each author provides, for the lack of a better phrase, they provide a short story is really what it is. Each author that participates within the project um, provides a short story, typically within about 1,500 to 1,800 words. And then those stories center around a specific theme. And within that, they're encapsulated into one project, which is the anthology. So people use the word anthology and co-author project. Those terms are interchangeable. But I was introduced to the anthology project, um, as I said before, because the first book that I participated participated with was an anthology. And I think it, I really consider anthology projects as an excellent way for people to be introduced into the literary community as an author. You're not responsible for the full book. The, you know, the full content of a book, you um, don't have to pay for the full expense associated with the publishing of a book. It's a shared, a shared experience. And then, and then another big bonus, in my personal opinion, as a result of participating in an anthology project is the relationships that you establish as a result of being connected with other like-minded people that you may not have known and probably would not have ever met if it had not been for that project. I know with with this particular project that I just completed with Becoming the Shiro, I knew every one of the women that I was a common denominator of the 14 women. And they literally are from the West Coast to the Virgin Islands, to, you know, literally. We have people represented from the Midwest, from the South, mm -hmm. from the East Coast. And um, some of them have now established relationships and they've created their own sense of community and established conversations amongst themselves because they had other things in common outside of me, which is a beautiful thing, you know, which has been a great thing. So so that's an anthology in and of itself It's basically a, a collaboration of short stories under a specific thing. OK, so um, Lady Norma. When it comes to anthologies, what is like the benefit in your eyes? Because I know you do anthologies as well, right? Yes. The biggest benefit, I think, is especially for a new author who has never written before. It gives them an opportunity to actually write and publish uh, their works. And it doesn't have to be, and it's not in a full book. And you don't take on the same responsibilities that you would have with the book, but you have an opportunity to learn all the skills that you need if you're working with me, because I always work with my authors to teach them how to write if they need to do that or coach writing with them. So they have, when they finish with that particular story, then if they want to write a book, they can. Or I encourage them to uh, write, like when I'm writing anthologies and stories, I think I've written my whole life in different uh, anthologies. So you can just continue with a different theme depending on what the theme of that anthology is. But you can get several stories uh, written and put out there and become a well-known author just by writing in, in the anthology. And you don't have all the other uh, pieces that go along with that because it can be quite costly when you are doing it yourself uh, alone. So the shared responsibility uh, is a big push as well. Wow. Yes. Cause I've, like I said, I've been in seven anthologies and I never thought that I would be in that many, but I've heard people actually state that they write in anthologies to come out with a book of their own. Mm -hmm. So each anthology project plays on each other and they they have a book uh -huh. Uh -huh. and i'm like oh that's very creative <laughs> and a lot of people are doing that um because i have this lady who's told me she's written 20 books within the last you know so often i'm going oh really well, I said, okay she's been writing <laughs> anthologies she <laughs> Yes, that's a lot of books. <laughs> yeah, once you talk to them, you find out they are anthologies, but they're still books. So, you know, she had written uh, in 20 books. So, but yeah. Yes. Wow. Okay, well, we are going to take another quick break and we'll be right back. Attention all coaches and consultants. You have to write the book first. No one ever got called up to appear on Oprah because she thought about writing a book. No one will shake your hand at a business conference and be thrilled that you're planning to write a book. No one will pay you more because you might write a book someday. 
You have to actually write the book. And that's where it all falls apart for so many people. I don't have time. I don't know what to write about. I hate to write. The list of excuses goes on and on. But you know what? That's all they are. Excuses. They hold no weight, and you can't let them prevent you from reaping the rewards a published book can bring. How would you like to receive $1,000 scholarship towards an exclusive program? Towards writing, publishing, marketing and monetizing your signature coaching book. Starting December 1st allow me to show you how to monetize your expertise with your very own signature coaching book in our 8 weeks group coaching program. I am going to show you how to write your book. You will get it published. We will assist you with marketing, custom design your book cover show you the step-by-step -step plan on monetizing your signature coaching book the first five people to sign up by november 26th receives one thousand dollar scholarship towards this exclusive program register at bit.ly write your signature book and get my exact step-by-step -step blueprint and the assistance from my team and i what we will cover in the group coaching program week one and two book ideas that work plus highly effective research. Week 3 and 4, creating your powerful signature book outline. Week 5 and 6, planning your book chapters for maximum clarity and power. Week 7 and 8, writing, editing and formatting your book like a pro. Marketing package. Finally become a published author. Grab this step-by-step -step plan today and you'll have your book in your hands, written, published, with a marketing and monetization plan. See you in the group. All right, we are back. We are here with Dr. Anissa Short and Dr. Norma First Lady McLaughlin. So we have been, oh man, spitting out some juice when it comes to publishing your books and writing anthologies. So we also heard a little bit about their journeys, um, becoming a writer and a publisher. So ladies, I want to know now, what are some challenges and opportunities that people will have by writing a book? Oh, I'll just <laughs> go first and say the biggest challenge I think that any author has is editing. Editing is my big pet peeve. <laughs> Simply because some of people don't, well, they can't afford editors if that's the problem, or they don't understand the importance of an editor. Um, that editing is more than just, um, but I mean, some of them, if they just get the grammar correct, it would be a wonderful thing. But uh, just some of them don't understand that it's just grammar, but you have different types of editors, like three different types of editors, and that work needs to go through those channels, even if it is a short story, or if you want that book to be read at whatever level you want it to be read. So if your goal is to do write a book for your family and once they read it, it's on the coffee table, you sold 10 books. If that's your goal, then that's fine. But if you're trying to get to make more sales from that book and move yourself forward in the literary marketplace, then you uh, may want to make sure that that book is at the level that people will purchase and continue to read. Because a lot of people, unfortunately, once they start reading, if there's a lot of if there are grammatical errors, any type of errors, and the flow is not there, then the book is obviously uh, not read. Or you start reading, you never pick it back up again. So that's my biggest pet peeve. <laughs> well, yeah. You know what? I feel all of that. <laughs> I feel all of that. <laughs> She started it with a big sigh, like, I can start you off with that one right there. <laughs> As a mess, see, I had just, that has been my, I guess, this whole last, what, month or so. Uh, because I've had these books and I'm going, okay, you know, let's, let's talk about this. But, but that is, I think that is uh, the pinnacle of the good writing, that you understand that you cannot edit, professionally edit your own material. Ooh. Amen. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I will add into the benefits since she, she touched on the biggest um, <laughs> challenge. She didn't touch she on it. On the biggest <laughs> t- and I would expect that as a result of her being the publisher and working yes. with, you know, and the coach, writing coach and that kind of mm-hmm. thing. I will speak from the standpoint of actually being a participant in the literary community as an author or even being a advocate, I guess, for others. One of the things I've learned is your book becomes your business card. Mm-hmm. I will never forget that terminology. I don't know if I can give Lady Norma that credit for that term or someone else. But- As a matter of fact, that's in my book right now. Yeah, your book becomes your business card. Mm-hmm. So, re- so regardless of what industry for which you represent, for me it's entrepreneurship, then as a as a result of my writing, my writings now become they add more credibility to me as an entrepreneur, whether I intended them to to do so or not. Now I was advised by my awesome mentor that when I was writing my book, The Vendor Blueprint, she ex- encouraged me to go ahead and, and start thinking about what I would charge for speaking engagements and that sort of thing. And I was like, well, I'm not trying to speak. I'm just I'm just wanting to get this book out. So it can serve as a resource. So when these people call me, I have something to offer them. Exactly. She's like, well, Anissa, what's going to happen is that people will begin to see you as an expert in your industry because you've written a book. So trust me. And I said, yes, ma'am. And I did not follow the instructions that time. And sure enough, as soon as that first and second book was released, I got two phone calls within a short window of time of women who were um, wanting me to come to be a speaker at a a networking event for women in business and as entrepreneurs. So I say I share that story basically just to support what I said just prior to it is that regardless of what industry for which you are a part of, you want to write, participate in the literary and literary works that help to establish your credit credibility in that industry. It gives you exposure. And um, Dr. Tracy, I know you already know this because of, (laughs) The works that you've already done and those other opportunities for which you've participated in, they came about one led to another. Mm-hmm. So whether you're an educator, um, if you are a master organizer, you know, if you are an event planner, regardless of what industry a person has chosen, I just believe that participating in a project, a literary project of some sort, even if it's just a resource, will help to provide them with an open door and um, stabilize or in, in, or add to their level of influence in their respective industries. So that's the biggest, to me, that's the biggest benefit. You know, and you know, you're right, because one of the things that I have actually found that I'm I'm great at and an advisor on is, you know, working mothers and being vulnerable in in my first book, which is becoming a shero. Um I believe will actually peel back the layers because people that I let read the book, you know, so I can, you know, get some feedback on it. They were like, wow, my mother was in tears. My son, the youngest one was like, man, ma, I didn't notice. And because they see me as Dr. Lashley, I'm way up here in their eyes, but to me, I'm not, but they don't see when I was down at the bottom, you know, and, and couldn't feed my kids. We didn't have anywhere to live. You know, they didn't see that part. So I had to get naked. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So now there is no question of how can she help me? Because they see me at my worst and at my best right now. And yeah, I I truly believe that it's your business card. Mm -hmm. Man, I thought I'd get naked. I just thought about that. I said, okay. That's you, know, what we a lot of times, you know, and a lot of I think one of the things is um, Lady Norma said this earlier is that in the process of writing, we heal. But also the, the challenges and the interesting times of our life that we got through was never really about us in the first place. It's really and that's why being transparent and being willing to share your story is so important, because it not only gives you some some um, brings you to a place of resolve yourself. But it also paints the picture to give someone else the encouragement they need because they there is someone else, no doubt, facing the same thing that you had faced. So they need to know what's possible. But a lot of times we don't tell that story because we don't want to, quote, get naked, as you say it. Yes. Um, we don't want to be <laughs> transparent. And then the unfortunate part of that is that people do see us where we are now. When they meet us and they go, oh, she's Dr. Such and Such and she's, you know, she's got this going on. They don't know how we started and the challenges that we face because we're not sharing them. There is a lot 
to be to be said about sharing your story. And that's one of the things I absolutely love about being able to work closely with Lady Norma because her objective was not about being a publisher just to be out there publishing books to bring in the money. Now, don't get me wrong. Your gift will make room for you and you know you can monetize your gifts. However, her passion was about helping people get their stories out there. And one way in which to do that, an excellent way in which to do that is to write. You know, so in writing and encouraging them to write and encouraging them to do so with excellence in a in a spirit of excellence, she's not only helping the author become a to hone their craft or perfect their craft, but she's also helping them to create a vehicle that will help someone else along the way. So you, everybody wins. Wow. Yeah, that's a great way of putting it. Mm. Thank you, Anissa. <laughs> You're very welcome. I'm sitting over there like, oh, man. <laughs> it's about, you know, and that's one of my passions, though, about collaborating. I've often said, and Tracy, you and I have had this conversation, is that if I'm going to work with you in any capacity, I, you need to win and I need to win. And it's not about yes. if it's always one sided. I'm always benefiting and you're getting nothing out of it. That's not a collaboration. Real, true collaborations bring about a win for everybody. And, you know, so everybody gains something as a result of the relationship. And so if it's not a win for everybody, I can't participate. And I see that facilitating anthologies even now serves as a win because I'm giving I'm, a, I'm affording people an opportunity to, to, to share their voice. And then yeah. you have the radio program and you're doing the same thing, you know. Yes. So I um, mean, then Lady Norma is helping us to learn how to put our, you know, conjugate our birds. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> she is going to ensure that people continue to read. <laughs> you want them to read profit <laughs> books. That's all. <laughs> Man, we're talking about <laughs> publishing and being an author and anthologies and everything. So we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, I want you guys to talk about the investment piece, the importance of investing in yourself, you know, because I'm one of the ones that say, okay, if I get away thing away for free, that means I'm robbing you of investing in yourself. So oh. we're going to take a quick break and we're going to talk about this one because I know y'all are going to spill all the tea on this. We will be right back. <laughs> Dr. Lashley is an expert team culture strategist who educates leaders on techniques to harmonize family and work life while developing dynamic and productive teams. After being raised underprivileged, becoming a single mother of two, Dr. Lashley married an army soldier who deployed to Afghanistan, Iraq, and Korea 11 times during his 20 years of service. She was forced to raise three of five children essentially alone. As a working mother and college student for 10 years, she had to find a sense of balance while juggling her children's activities and not losing herself in the process. She now helps working mothers and women in leadership positions harmonize their life while creating dynamic and productive teams at home and work. Are you ready for Dr. Lashley to elevate your teams at work and home? If so, contact her today by sending an email to info at drtracielashley.com or by going to her website at drtracylashley.info. Dr. Tracy Lashley is the voice of the oppressed and master of teaching the transformational steps from pain of trauma to the power of a survivor. Destined for the shape-shifting ability to step into thriving beyond trauma. She has survived welfare, single parenthood, divorce, military spouse life, being broke, living with bad credit, borderline homeless, not being able to feed her children, just simply struggling to survive for her and her children. If you can relate and wish Dr. Lashley to assist you, contact her today by sending an email to info at drtracielashley.com or by going to her website at drtracylashley.info. All right, we are back. And y'all know I've been waiting on this. I want y'all to spill all the tea when it comes to investing in yourself, to write these books, anthologies, or just whatever. Who want to take the floor first? <laughs> Um, well, I'll just say this. Um, I'll just say this. Okay. Anything worth having is worth investing in. 
you know, you get out of it what you what you put into it. You honestly do. And um, my husband has said to me more than one time that um, if, if it was easy to do, everybody would be doing it. If it was free, you know, it's probably anything that's that's free is probably not worth having. You don't even you, you really don't give as much of yourself if you don't have any as people say skin in the game. Right. So yes. now when I when when one is looking to publish and they're wanting to participate maybe in an anthology project, I will say consider the options. There are a lot of various options out there. Um, I don't think you will go wrong no matter which option you choose as long as you understand how the industry works. It's just a matter of you finding the right puzzle or right piece or the, the right one that's the best fit for you. I say that to say this, there are people who have participated, which Dr. Tracy, you you know this, you participated in anthology projects that it also included other well-known names that were also co-authors. So the yeah. investment in that piece is going to be greater than it would be if you were just doing an anthology project with a group of girlfriends from church. You know, it would be different. You know, yeah. totally different as far as the investment piece. So I, I think people should look look at where where they are, start with whatever budget they feel comfortable with, but definitely understand that you get in return what you are willing to invest. There's nothing of any value is free. So you got to be willing to pay the cost and do what's necessary. And a lot of times it's not just the financial piece of it. That is a part of it, definitely, because nothing happens until some tr you know funds are transact the transaction occurs. True enough, but the person that you become in the in the process, you know, if you're you may think you are a great writer, but then you have Lady Normal who critiques you, and then then you realize that you're not as proficient in that area as you thought you were. But then you've grown as a result, so now you're better. So your next your next project will be even greater than the previous because of the training and the tutelage that you receive as a result of participating with a group of people who are not just out to get your money to get you a, put you in a book but actually want to see you grow and evolve then relationships i mean i've i've met people that i would not have otherwise met as a result of participating in projects like that so if, if gaining exposure and um in in um Getting the getting the necessary exposure, you need the exposure to build your level of influence or to build your brand is important to you. Then you have to make the investment. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen by happenstance. Well, <laughs> I wish you guys could see her face. <laughs> I'm, I'm a true believer in that anything worth having is worth investing in. I also, unfortunately, one of my ministerial gifts uh, is giving. So I have a real hard time to making sure that I stay on track with that because of course the opposite side of that gift, which all gifts have, is that you may end up giving when you should not give. And mm -hmm. therefore you have robbed, not only robbed yourself, of the blessings that God has given to you, but you've also hurt that other person because they have not made the investment that they need to make. So having said that, um, <laughs> then all people need, I mean, it doesn't matter if you are willing to write and you need to write, you need to find a way in order to do that. And over the last few months, I have, with my writers, tried to find pre-sales or some way that would help them to be able to get the money that they need in order to do the investment uh, so that they can write the book. My burden is so strong that you need to write that story to, because someone needs to hear that story. Uh, my big thing is, is having your job experience. You've had a job experience, so the experience needs to be shared with someone else. There's someone desperately waiting to hear your story or read your story. So my goal then becomes a way of trying to help you to be able to find that investment if you're not able to get it. Uh, it being that through pre-sales, donations, sponsors or whatever, but coming up with some creative way for you to be able to do that. OK, y'all here, Lady Normal. Um, y'all need to reach out to her because <laughs> she. Will yeah, I was just going to say that. Tracy, I'm glad you said that, because here's the thing. Here's the thing I know as a result of being a 
active participant in working with Chosen Pen and Lady Norma, as well as working alongside her, is that it's not just the publishing of the book in and of itself. I mean, the editing process occurs, you know, the coaching, how to write, the um, information that you need to become a more excellent writer, the editing, the formatting, the book cover, that's all a part of the publishing process. However, then there's the other element where she's going to do um, a, the package includes marketing. The package includes um, strategies on how to generate funds because not only is the finished book important, but she wants to make sure that in doing so, as she said earlier, if even if you don't have the total funds needed to invest in the project, there are strategies that can be implemented along the way before that book is even launched that can assist you with generating the funds. She doesn't have to do that. She really doesn't. I mean, honestly, she could just say, listen, this is the price. Are you going to pay a cash check or charge? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Are we going to do this at a, a payment plan? Or what? I mean, that's really, that's really, honestly, that's really, yeah. honestly, that's what she could say. She could really say. But because her passion is not just the dollars and the cents, her passion is to make sure that the stories get out there and that people don't give up and don't abort the process before it, it's completed. She works diligently to make sure that she, you know, shares those strategies with them to help them generate the funds. One lady's one lady on this previous project that they just they're finishing up now. Her pre-sale activity helped her pay for her investment into the anthology. And then she still has wow. funds left over to be able to make investments in the books when they're ready for make to make purchase to then continue the sales. That's the, that's the business side of it. And a lot of people don't know that when they write a book, they're actually starting a business. So Lady Norma is excellent. And not only with the logistics of the writing process, but helping you see strategically how this is a business and how you have to think business minded to make sure that you have a credible product, but also that you're on purpose with getting the word out about the product so it can continue to generate continued income. Wow. And when you say getting the word out, I am in a lot of um, Facebook groups, <laughs> not only Facebook, or just social media, period. And I'm seeing a pattern of people self-publishing or people writing it. It's like they go nowhere. They just sitting there is collecting dust. So I was like, well, maybe if they had a platform where they can have people hear their voice and connect them to that book and give them that advertisement that they can get more sales, receive more sales because right now you did, you put all that work in that book, that story, somebody needs to read it. They need to hear well, they it. Well, they need to understand the process. But you get a book. Okay, we lose it. Okay, I think we're losing her again. Lady Norma, I think we've lost you again. <laughs> the Wi-Fi can be crazy. Yes. What What I'll say is this, out until she comes back on, is that one of the things that um, I've come to realize as a result of being a part of this literary community is that a lot of people choose the self-publishing option because they don't want to make the investment in mm. the other parameters. Some of them don't want to or they don't have it, but they want to get their story out. So I know mm -hmm. um, there have been times when Lady Norma has um, in, in my communicating with other people and they realize that my book became a bestseller and they asked you and you said this. People ask you, well, how did your book become a bestseller? Because I work with someone who gave me the strategies that mentored me through the process. So they you have to pay to play. You have to pay to play. Right. And you have you to know. have skin in the game. <laughs> to get it. And, and so but here's the, the beautiful thing about it. The relationships that I established, I just referred them to Lady Norma and said, well, if you have a book already prepared and you want to see how what you need to do to market it properly so that maybe bestseller status can be your um, your realization. Well, what she finds out is that not the book needs to be rewritten or there are a lot of edits that needs to be done. So she'll say, well, I don't mind helping anyone get their book out there. But if it's going to have the name Chosen Pen Publishing on it, it has to be right. So now are you willing to go back and rewrite this book or go through these ne the necessary edits that are that's required under her standard in order for that, that name? So then they end up having to do the work twice. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Wow. So yes. What they could have done initially, they end up having <laughs> to do anyway, if that's where they want to go. Um, mm -hmm. 
if that's where they want to go. I know a lot of people that have written books. They've had them published. They use them for their respective platforms in their general community. And that's totally fine. It's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But for those who want to increase their brand awareness, increase their platform of influence, it will serve you to have bestseller or international bestseller or have an amp you know in a lot of communities you're not really you're not really an author unless i can find your name on amazon right exactly let's <laughs> say i heard she wrote a book is she on amazon <laughs> no she's not a real author then you know so um so i like, can't thing. find her out there like no she <laughs> ain't writing no book girl she so just <laughs> it depends on the person what it is they want to accomplish you know for me it was not about being a bestseller author it was about creating a vehicle to help other women so I could just give them a, it was to be, create a resource. And then it, then all this other stuff came about, you know, it all came about. So, yeah. So Lady Norma, I was just telling, um, I was just sharing with the viewers and welcome back. I know Wi-Fi won't always let us be great. But, I know, um, especially not tonight. <laughs> yeah. But I was just, I was just saying, just as you were coming on that a lot of times people who have chosen the self-published route, either it's because they feel like they don't have the finances to make the investment or they don't choose to make the investment because they don't see the value in making that investment. And then when they when they come back and they reach out to someone like you and say, help me get to bestseller status or help me with this project, they end up having to do over what they could have done in the onset, <laughs> in the process. Yes, I do have what we called, um, uh, what is it? Um, I can't even remember now. Oh, second edition. And we have several authors who want second edition. The second edition is simply a process where they become bestsellers. They've already written a book and you take that book and we make it, we take it to bestseller status um, by looking at, uh, and when you're doing a second edition, there are several reasons you could do that. It doesn't even have to be for bestseller. It could be for editing. It could be, you want to change the cover. You want whatever you want to do, but it would be the, um, a call to second edition and which is a big help for a lot of people because they uh, put that book out there the first time. And once they get it out there, they realize that it is not all that they wish for it to be. But they also need to realize if you want to self publish, we have some programs that we have are called a la carte. If you just want to uh, do print, uh, uh, look, looking at help us with the publishing, we can do that. If you want the marketing package, we can do that. Whatever your needs are, we usually can help you get that book where you need it to be. Uh, and it's, it may not be as much as you think it's going to be uh, for a particular piece of the package. Uh, so there's always help. Uh, for you yes all right ladies um what i want you to do now is share final thoughts and how they can get in touch with you and purchase from you <laughs> don't be shy don't be shy <laughs> well my final thoughts are just looking at some of the things i'm doing now of course it's the minister's mates i have the minister's mates matter saturday afternoon program at six o'clock uh that we interview uh men mates the male or female if, or if you are a mate of a, a minister any type of minister uh that we're talking about that uh, which is another program that's near and dear to my heart uh to have someone to share because we know that's one of the loneliest positions uh that's out there because there's nobody to share those burdens with as well. But then my other thing that I have coming out now is uh, how to write your signature book course. I have the book that's coming out that's uh, the, uh, how to write your signature book. But based on that book, we have a course. And so for those of you who are wanting to actually write, it's an eight week course. We start you from inception of the book of idea all the way to marketing and producing and uh, monetizing that book. So if you want to join that course, uh, you can find me, the go in chosen, uh, uh, chosenpen.com or chosenpeninstitute.com and find that. Or if you cannot find all those, just email me at firstladynorma at gmail.com. And to contact me, you can find me on Facebook under my um, alias, the work from home CEO <laughs> on my Facebook page. Um, that's ampersand W F. H C E O. Um, you can connect with me there. Um, my website is the work from home CEO.biz B I Z. 
um, to keep up with that, that that website is going to be revamped soon. And all of the books for which I have participated or um, either written or co-authored can be found on Amazon, Amazon.com. Just look up my name, Dr. Anissa Short <laughs> or just Anissa Short. <laughs> All right, ladies, I have enjoyed this conversation. This has been so great. I'm glad I chose you first. <laughs> well, thank you again. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> and again, we will have more guests um, next week. So stay tuned and I will see you then. Bye. Thank you for listening to When They Hear Us, where Dr. Tracy Hines Lashley and her guests provide stories and experiences. This is also a platform for authors to encourage, empower, and equip people around the world with their voice. To learn more about Dr. Lashley and her quest to share the voice of powerful writers, go to her website at drtracylashley.info. You may also contact her by sending an email to info at drtracylashley.com. Remember to always intentionally walk in your purpose and strive to elevate to significance.